Hi everyone. Welcome to another episode of Travel Talk series by Trip 101. I'm Nidra Pat, a content and project executive, and I'm very happy to welcome you to another episode of our Travel Talk series. In this series, the goal is to talk to different area experts, tour guides, property owners, to give you guys more information about how to travel and plan your journey to your dream destination even more efficiently. Today, I'm excited to talk about a hidden gem in Sri Lanka. A beautiful city surrounded by mountains, historically, culturally, and religiously rich. Uh, the city is called Kandy, and it also has a world UNESCO heritage site called Temple of Tooth Relic. Our expert in today's journey will be our tour guide with over a decade of experience. His name is Mini, or rather that's his nickname. We are happy to have you on board today. Uh, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself. My nickname is Mihi. My full name is Lahiru Mihiran, which is a little bit difficult to pronounce. So I'll go with Mihi. I am a southern region born tour guide from, but having covered almost all the tourist destinations around the country, I'm pretty much familiar with Kandy. I'm uh, one of my favorite places as well when I'm doing the tour guide, uh, tour guiding works. I have been working in this industry for about uh, one decade. Uh, I started uh, from the hotel industry and then moved to the travel industry later on and started my own uh, travel company here in Sri Lanka. It has been working really well and we have been creating different new experience for the international travelers who are visiting Sri Lanka and we, me and my team was able to create um, so many unforgettable experiences and pretty much authentic and traditional way of tour guiding experience to them to remember for throughout their uh, lifetime. So with all these tasks and everything, we have been able to gain a lot of foreign income to this country throughout the last few years. And this time around, Sri Lankan ind tourism industry is getting developed and it's booming actually. So I think it's a perfect time to send the messages to international travelers to visit Sri Lanka. That's a great perspective and mission. I also saw your tours of the diversity of adventure as well as cultural experiences, religious experiences. So I'm sure that's something tourists would love. Yes, actually, at, at the beginning when I started this uh, tour guiding journey, I was stuck, uh, like I, I sticked into the basic tour guiding and method of traditional. But with the time goes on, I have realized that there are lots of hidden gems and off-beaten paths in Sri Lanka, which tourists might not have seen. Being a solo traveler before joining this industry, I have been to many places in this country. About 85% of this country has been covered by me. I have been a hiker, I have been a scout. So I have done lots of camping, been to many mountains and to the beautiful places around this island. I had an ambition to promote hidden areas and take tourism into the suburbs and isolated villages in the mountains, where they are the uh, real culture, the high degree of biodiversity still remains. So throughout the last few years, I have been creating new itineraries, which are very unique. Some of them are focusing on eco-tourism and some of them are focusing community-based tourism, which the benefit even goes to the ground level of the communities. More out of this tourism industry, thanks to those itineraries. So I have been trying to create a different image and perspective in this industry at the moment. Yeah, and I'm sure it's working because here we are today talking about candy. It has yes. a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but it remains a hidden gem. I'm excited to talk to you yes. about it. Before we begin, can you briefly explain candy and what it's famous for. The history of the Kandy city goes back to the prehistorical area. Sri Lanka has been civilized uh, for about 2,500 years according to the written evidences. But when you deeply go through the history of this island, you can clearly see that the civilization has gone beyond that. Even before Buddha's birth, there were lots of civilized people living here and they had a good life because this country has the resources like food and mineral water. It was not difficult for the people to survive within this country. Uh, they have been living around these mountains from the Anuradhapura era. The kingdoms were shifting 
within the period of these 2500 years first it was anuradhapura city in the northern part of sri lanka and then it moved to polonnaru because of some of the invasions came from south indian kerala and uh, tamil nadu area there were some invaders came to sri lanka and acquired anuradhapura then sri lankan kings decided to shift the kingdoms to uh, polonnaru and they remained there for 500 years and then came to another place likewise the kingdoms were shifting from one place to another for about six or seven times so kandy was the last kingdom we experienced as a kingdom so one one kingdom was ruling the whole country and the crown remains from the that city capital city of kandy kandy was the last kingdom so the history about the kingdom doesn't go back to very long years like anuradhapura or polonnaru but it, it's close to present times it was the last kingdom of sri lanka most kings in kandy didn't rule for a long time because they had lots of fighters not from india actually the colonial rulers effects first it was portuguese in 1505 portuguese came to sri lanka and they acquired the coastal areas of the country and then they tried to approach the capital city of can they tried but they failed because of few difficulties to get into the capital city at that time this candy city is situated in the mountains as you said at the beginning and there are lots of steep areas which is really difficult to get in and about 20 25 rivers are going around and there are flash floods even the sri lankan local army was able to control the enemies from coming and entering the capital for a long time uh, and they secured the capital uh, during the first colonial era and then came dutch dutch came to sri lanka in a very strange manner there was one king who was ruling in the kandy who wanted these portuguese people to be chased out and that per- that king he got the support from dutch and he invited dutch to come inside of the country and chase this portuguese away so dutch came and they realized this country has lot of things to offer <laughs> as a nation and they realized that sri lanka has lots of elephants like especially the ivory and there are gem mining areas like very famous gem mining areas around the country and still if you consider about the gem industry here in sri lanka i i don't think only half of the whole gem mining has been done so it's a half left at that time it must be a huge industry and the sri lankan location in the boat which is situated in the middle of the silk route region whenever the ships were sailing through the silk route it was a really convenient stop for them to come and uh, do their business and to get refilled and uh, get the food and all the logistics so in that manner dutch have identified this location as a very strategic place and wanted to acquire the country they acquired the coastal area and were here for 70 years they try to fight with the capital kandy and the king and his army but failed they couldn't conquer the capital then came british british were very smart british didn't go in the same way as the portuguese or dutch they took the support from the locals some of the local leaders they betrayed the king the british were able to get inside of the capital and they did lot of conspiring and offering liquor to the local people and local people were fooled actually finally they were able to conquer the capital and they detained the king in south india one place called vellore and because of these reasons the whole country was belongs to the british later on back in 10 they signed an agreement with the local government at that time that the whole power has been handed over to the british crown and the king of the british has been declared as the person who's in taking care of this island as well before the british colonial era it was not as developed as this actually to be honest it was british who has done significant changes to the city especially with the urban planning modifying the city and uh, making it more beautiful city than we had earlier <clears throat> later on what uh, british people had done was they have identified the importance of this city since it's situated in the middle of sri lanka covered with 
pretty green lush mountains and there are so much of biodiversity and water resources around and the nature is uh, like countless yeah. so they not only made that candy city as their capital administrative city they have promoted it to the other world as well so that's how Candy became a world popular city and later on discovered, um, declared as one of the UNESCO heritage cities. The most significant about this city is the main temple, Temple of Tooth Relic of Lord Buddha, which still contains one of the two relics of Lord Buddha. And that's possibly the only place around the world that you can go and see and worship one of the tooth relics of the leader of the Buddhist religion. Because of this significance, millions of tourists from all around the world come and visit this city. This city is surrounded by beautiful villages, cascades and everything. I... Sounds a fascinating city and as you said, we'll talk a lot more about it. Before we get into the attractions, let's talk about logistics and how to travel around the city. How far is the city centre from the airport and what's the easiest way to get there? No, and Sri Lanka have two main international airports. Mm -hmm. The most famous one is situated in Nigambo, which is okay. called Bandaranaike International Airport, which is the oldest one we have, which is situated about 140 kilometres from Candy City. Mm -hmm. The other airport is in Hambantota, Hambantota, deep south Sri Lanka. From that side also, you can get into the Candy City, it's about 250 kilometers away from there. But the road and the logistics are not that uh, user-friendly if you are getting out from the Matala Airport and come into Candy So the easiest way, if, if you are coming from the Colombo side, then it's pretty much easy to get down from Colombo Bandaranaike International Airport. And there are 140, around 140 kilometers to travel. You can take either taxi or a train trains are there but you need to book that in advance my suggestion is to take a taxi it doesn't cost much you can always go online and find a driver and show for someone to get that help if you are familiar with public transport so much is available but if you are a first time visitor to sri lanka you might feel a bit uncomfortable but always you can get our support since we are here so we are happy to help to get yeah. into Candy. Uh, so about taxi, are these taxi easily available near the airport? Yes, there are a few options. Uh, Bandaranak International Airport offer taxi service from their properties. Like they have registered drivers, mm -hmm. taxi drivers there. Whenever you are coming out of the airport, there is a taxi counter. You can just go and tell your requirement and they will take you. We have Uber and another local transport app called pick me and uber both of these apps are available those are not expensive like very convenient <clears throat> for you to travel even you can book a took using uber here in sri lanka so it's convenient but don't take it to candy because you will be having lots of uncomfortable abilities climbing all those mountains all the way <laughs> from Colombo to there so you can use uber and pick me as well again if you or a traveler who plan everything in advance, you can always go to TripAdvisor or local travel agents and get your taxi arranged by them in advance. There are so many taxis are available around Kandy and uh, Nigambo suburbs. Transport sources are easy to find from that end. Okay, great. Uh, you also did mention public transportation, so mostly train and bus as well. Yes. We have buses and trains. Talking about buses, we have the public buses belongs to the government. It has one color, red color buses. If you see red buses, there is a 90% of possibility that it can be a public bus. And it's written in the local language, so you might not understand whether it's a government bus or not, but you can always get support from a local. Public buses are a bit responsible in terms of taking care of you and they drive a bit carefully than the private buses. There are plenty of private buses, but you need to make sure that the bus go to which direction, which city and all of that. The suggestion is to get some sort of support from the locals because locals, most of the locals speak uh, English. In Sri Lanka, we have three languages, Sinhala, Tamil, 
and english most people can speak english not really fluent but for you yeah. need you can uh, get that done talking to them buses are there but you need to make sure where the buses are going so get the directions first talking about the trains we have a train service not the most accurate in the world whole country is not covered with the railway lines especially the eastern part and the north northern part of sri lanka is not covered with these train routes you can take a train to kandy the it's it's one of the most scenic ride that you can ever experience during your lifetime wow. if you are taking a train from colombo or from very close to the airport there is a railway station you can take a train from that train station to colombo main railway station then from colombo you can take another train to kandy trains are not available throughout the day there are specific yeah. times before you are coming you need to check whether the trains are uh, leaving around what time and mm. so you need to make the pre adjustments to those things trains are available catch a train and forgettable experience for sure are there any travel passes or specific cards that you know tourists can purchase Get more uh, no, we don't have travel passes systems here in Sri Lanka, but okay. we have online train booking apps. So you can log in to one of those apps, and if you search it yeah. on the Play Store, App Store, yeah. all of that, you will find Sri Lankan Railways, and you can book your tickets in advance. Other than that, we don't have travel passes here yet. Okay. I also know some tourists love to drive themselves, be adventurous in the city. Can they rent a car in Kandy? Do they require any special permits or licenses? If the traveler is coming with uh, the international driving license, they need to get that verified from two places around Colombo. I'm suggesting the travelers get support from a local travel agency because then it makes very easy for them to find the places and they arrange everything. Later, they can rent a car or even a now they nowadays there is a big trend among international travelers to rent tuk tuks yeah. uh, from from kandy because it's convenient sri lankan roads are not so wide or like when you are traveling in the hills tuk is one of the easier way to easier way that you can go through the tra- traffic things and all but the problem is tuk tuk is not the most safest vehicle in the world be careful when driving otherwise you can meet with lots of accidents around kandy there are plenty of car and tuk tuk rental services available if you go online you will find so many service providers around the kandy areas all right so now we are in the city let's talk about the attractions a lots of religious and cultural sites is there yep. any specific dress code that tourists need to observe Kandy is not only a tourist attractive city it's a very much high context religious even uh, among the local people they respect the city as one of the spiritual cities in the country if you visit a buddhist temple or a hindu temple my advice is to wear something light usually the buddhist people they are wearing white clothes covering shoulders and the pants need to be longer than knees that's the dress code that we are usually wearing but it can be a light one if you are wearing a dark color one that doesn't matter but there is no rule but just to show your respect yeah. to this culture and the values and norms so my advice is to wear something light if you are visiting a place like temple of tooth relic it's always better that you follow those things rituals Okay, great. The next question I have naturally would be: Can you suggest some places where tourists as well as locals love to visit? When you talk about Kandy, the first thing that comes to mind is this beautiful temple in the middle of the city, which is surrounded by. From one end, it's sur- surrounded by a lake, man-made lake, mm-hmm. and uh, on the other side, on the back side of the temple you will see a lush green small rainforest on the top of that place this is situated in a high biodiversity sensitive area in terms of nature and cultural beauty this temple is you can witness the tooth relic of lord buddha this temple has about 7 to 10 elephants you can see them feeding almost all the tusk elephants very prestigious looking mm-hmm. it's a beautiful sight in the morning if you visit the temple of tooth relic in the morning there are many festivals throughout the year there are drummers dancers and 
cultural events are happening around these temple premises. It will definitely give you a new experience. And the architecture of this temple is not similar to other temples around the world. This was actually made by one of the kings who were ruling during the British colonial period. They have created this as a one of the palaces. So later on, it has converted into a temple and now this temple has a very unique architecture which will amaze some of the architectural fans around the world. I would uh, suggest you go and spend some quality time inside this temple and ex explore the arts, rituals, cultural events that have uh, been taken place all throughout the day and how the people come and worship. You will evidence how much of respect that the Buddhist people have about this place. Buddhist people have a huge faith in this place. And not only saying, if you, by the time you are entering this temple, you will feel some sort of different vibe. Like, I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, uh, you need to experience Because that vibe has been building throughout the last few centuries inside of that place and it makes you so calm. That's something unbelievable about this place. So whenever you might go inside of the temple with so much of a stress, so much of problems, but by the time you are coming back, everything will be all right. I have experienced and my fellow travelers have been experiencing that throughout the last few decades. I can guarantee that's the first place I would take them. Even you can be a Buddhist or non-religious mm -hmm. person or whoever, but this is one of the great attractions that you can experience. The second place in Kandy mm -hmm. is the Royal Botanical Garden introduced by British colonial rulers because since these Europeans were fascinated about the nature and they were they were into picnics during their free time. Uh, most of the European country people, they love to go and do picnics. So they, they needed the park and they developed this Royal Botanical Garden at that time. Mm -hmm. And it has very different types of plants, flower gardens, and one of the most beautiful locations that you can experience around the candy. It's about five kilometers away from the temple of Tooth Relic, but it's easy to get in and for both these places there are tickets has to be purchased to go inside even for the temple of tooth relic you need to buy tickets and for botanical garden also you need to buy tickets these are the main attractions another temple called bahiravakan the temple which has a beautiful viewpoint and special thing about this city when you are going to the mountain areas you will always have beautiful viewpoints from all, all corners of the city and the country as well. So there are many viewpoints around this around these mountains and there are cultural villages like the ones who are doing craft and handicrafts and even still engaged with local industries. When you're going outside the city, there are many hidden gems. All right. Yeah, my next <coughs> question was actually about the hidden gems inside the city. But we can also talk about hidden gems nearby that we can explore. Most of the hidden gems inside of the city has been already explored now. Okay. <laughs> because since this city is not very big like <laughs> Columbia, the population is less, close to 1 million, but density is less than Colombo. And the city is small compared to the other part of the country. It's been expanded city around these mountain areas. There are few waterfalls close to the city, but most of the hidden gems are situated nearby outside of these mountains. Okay. Not very far. About within one hour's time or less than one hour, you can get into those hidden gems. As a tour guide who's going out of this box, the traditional box, I would go out of these mountain areas and just to get rid from traffic of candy and there is a road going up the hills and getting to the other side of it. It goes through the slope and there, there is a uh, very narrow bend called 18 bends, which is a very scenic area. This is the area which has not been explored that much. And there are plenty of hidden gems around that area, even only the local people know. Uh, I have been in those particular parts for a long period of time during my tour guiding life but not many travelers would know about those. There are about uh, 25 at least waterfalls 
Wow. Not, I'm not talking about small waterfalls. These are giant waterfalls hidden inside these mountains. One of them is Huluganga. Huluganga is one of the most popular among the local crowd. But when the international tourist goes to the, those places, they lost their minds most of the time <laughs> because it's so fascinating. Yeah. And this area, the Candy City and the nearby suburbs, having it's getting rain all throughout the year. Because of that, it's not a dry city. It's a very much wet and very green. And you can see lots of water resources are available. Even the rivers are flowing with full flow almost all the time. So this makes lots of more beauty into the nature. So there are hidden waterfalls around these suburbs. And the other thing is in Sri Lanka, our main occupation of the country is agriculture. Most of the people doing agricultural works, especially rice paddy cultivation around the country, especially in the flatlands, not in candy. Candy also doing it in a different manner, like they are doing it in inside of the mountains, like layers, layer system. But uh, especially when you go to the northern part of Sri Lanka, they are doing the agricultural works. To do these agricultural works, you need lots of water resources, like tanks, rivers coming from the mountains. So one of the Sri Lanka's longest, actually the longest river is starting close to Kandy city and it goes through the Kandy city. This is called Mahaveli river. Yeah. Mahaveli river starting pretty close to Kandy and from the mountains and that goes towards the eastern part of Sri Lanka. In 1970s, at the latter part of 70s, government had taken a decision that this water is really pure water going to the sea without getting any benefit and no added uh, advantage to the country's economy. So they have implemented uh, a development project called Mahavali project. They build uh, about uh, six dams mm -hmm. and uh, started generating electricity. And they have done like some unbelievable constructions are still there and huge Tanks are reservoirs. Reservoirs are around this mountain and candy city. The first one comes to my mind is Victoria Reservoir, the largest hydropower reservoir in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the hidden gem. If you are visiting candy, you can easily get inside. People are not going there because they don't know whether you can get permission. But there is no such thing. You can just go and take the ticket. Ticket is very cheap like 100 rupees even for the international travelers 100 rupee means very cheap yes, like yes. it's even nothing for the locals so this victoria uh, reservoir is one of the hidden gem that you can visit it's a magnificent creation in modern engineering the water is very green color there are lots of stories around that area because there were villages around that uh, particular region even before the victoria dam has been building they had to sink those villages to make this they shifted the city that city is called very close to candy now and a brand new city has been built and uh, people are living in that place during the drought season when the water level goes down you can still see the ruins of this old town that's one wow. of the tourist attractions. The temples are still remaining. Even the Buddhist uh, sculptures and statues and everything is still remaining inside of this giant reservoir. Not only this reservoir, there are another uh, chain of reservoirs yeah. around the mountain has been. So all these uh, reservoirs starting from Victoria, Rantambe, Randenigala, and a few of them are left in the latter part of the river. Nowadays, the river is not going with usual route it's going around the mountain and getting into the sea a different way so this is something that sri lankan engineers have done mm -hmm. during the latter part of 17 and 18s which is still amazed the engineering marvels around the world so this is something that tourists need to go and see and the civilization started around this valley because by the time they were creating these projects they have created new civilization around, around that project. So yeah, agricultural works and different cultural lifestyle has been uh, groomed. So it's something that I would uh, definitely recommend people to go and visit. 
there was great answer. Lots of hidden gems. Let's move on to adventurous things. Some tourists know that Candy is a mountain city, so they come with a certain expectation of thrill-seeking yes. activities. So can you recommend some of these adventurous things tourists can do in Candy? Once you get in the Candy City, within uh, one hour's time, you can get into the hiking hotspot of Sri Lanka, which is called the Knuckles Mountain Range. Knuckles Mountain Range is another UNESCO heritage and uh, situated in the heart of Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. which is a very sensitive biodiversity area and it's highly protected forest reserve, rainforest. Right. So this, this is the place which gives them uh, highest level of uh, water supply to the rivers which throughout the country like um, for each and every part. This is the place where it gives the blood. Knuckles means the fist. This is the shape of the mountains. There are five peaks of knuckles which are very similar to that fist. Once you go there, there are many hiking activities. I am also engaging with uh, some of the local communities inside of the first region. And we are teaching them about tour guiding for the locals and to wow. take the tourists inside of these hidden areas. There are Now they have developed few itineraries. There are three, oh, three days camping inside and you can do all five peak hike. Mm -hmm. And you can even go and visit the middle of Sri Lanka inside the Nakas using the GPS maps and everything. So we have developed all those things the, throughout the last few years. We have done the GIS, GPS mapping routes mm -hmm. are clearly available, but you cannot go there alone. You need to get the support from the local tour guide and get permission from the wildlife department. We can arrange that if somebody is willing to come and experience this Nakas region. If you are visiting Kandy and Having the intention of doing adventures, this is the perfect place. Whatever the sort of adventures, if you are, if you want to do white water rafting, uh, places available, and if you want to do abseiling, plenty of waterfalls around, and we can uh, the, those tour guides and local people have that facility for you to do. And there are many places you can do swimming in the natural bathing. There are lots of places. I have even shared some tips with Trip 101 regarding yeah. this matter about candy and nearby bathing spots and the waterfalls. If you are doing, if you are abseiling lover, candy and knuckles region is uh, that's the place. That's the place in the region actually. Even talking about Sri Lanka, yeah, this is the perfect place for you. And you, even if you are trying to do camping, there are many places around. Candy and Knuckles region. If you're talking about adventure mixed with history, there is a route with the support from Indian government and the Sri Lankan government. It's called Ramayan route has about 75 locations, 75% situated around Candy. Because this is the place which has that mysterious story remains and still there are a lot of beliefs. There are no clear written evidences, but that beliefs and stories are there. Actually, you will feel it even though you don't have the evidence. You will feel it. Uh, there are something inside these mountains. Yeah, there a are, mysterious they, aura. The place that the Ra King Ravana was living is inside of this mountain range called Nakas, mm -hmm. close to Kandy, about one hour drive from Kandy. And the place he has hid his aircraft called Dandumunara, which is also... It's called Yahangala, that mountain. It has a shape of air track. It has some slope where you can land uh, aircraft. So people believe that is one of the places. And there are some places where they have, where this king has uh, kept Sita, the princess, yeah. inside. And this route is pretty close to Candy. This is one of the adventures that you can experience here. Wow, that's, that sounds amazing. Something I would personally want to do if I come to Kandy. Yes. Now let's move on to area guide, like different neighborhoods. So the first question I would have is within the city center, and we talked a lot about it, but within the city center, is there any particular cultural or historical sites that tourists, can, that tourists should not miss at all? Yes, pretty close to the Kandy city, there are a uh, few places. Talking about the Buddhist culture, apart from the main temple, uh, there are few other temples around Gatabe Temple. This one, Bhairavakanda Temple is there, yeah. which has a really good view. Two places called Gadal and Ambekke. Those yeah. are again ancient temples, but those are belongs to different eras, kingdom eras. 
this ambedke temple has the most significant wood carvings in the country it's very unique compared to the other temple it has a high they have used great technology to do wood carvings so if you are wood carving lover this is one of the place that you need to visit it's again half an hour drive from the city center you can just take a bus or a tuk even to get into that place and uh, the gadala denio also another place that that's why has some sort of historical value and is another buddhist temple ambedke temple that wood carving temple is not completely buddhist it has a hindu background as well in sri lankan buddhism not only buddhist people there are hindu people muslim and christian people are also living there is a uh, big portion of uh, hindu are living around this mountain area called kandian Uh, they have been worshiping lord shiva and uh, other gods this ambedke temple has a 50 50 buddhist and hindu combination wow. so it's yeah it's they are doing it very harmony like with, with very harmony and no no conflicts at all even most of the sri lankan buddhist temple have this hindu influence and these cultures are mixed a little bit that goes ha- hand in hand this ambedke and gadaladin uh, both this temple are hidden gems but must visit cultural centers very close to this place and there are wood carving shops art and craft centers around the candy city and the other thing is the villages nearby still having the traditional values those are not much spoiled with the outside world some of the villages doesn't even know about internet and they are living very simple lives inside of these mountains some of them isolated ones so it's very basic simple lives they are living in that some of the somebody is willing to go deep inside of this culture that that is something that they can experience coming to candy and the other thing is can some nearby village some of these villages still doing traditional occupations like during the kingdom era separate villages have been given specific task for them to do some people were creating ropes that was their industry making ropes toddy jaggery and sweets and everything in, within their village some people were doing canes and related craft yeah. handicrafts in their villages likewise these people were categorizing according to their occupation and during that time there was a caste system was there but nowadays thanks to this uh, educational upgrade and all this uh, caste system and things are it's been demolished and it's fading away but this candy is some place that you can still experience the influence of that caste system yeah. some people might ask me your surname they will try to understand which <laughs> caste you that belongs to so that mindset is uh, i would say it doesn't fade away completely but it it has some sort of things so some of these villages belongs to that caste particular caste mm-hmm. so the people who are living that village get married inside not outside yeah. those villages they try to protect their norms culture and everything within their families this cultural experience yeah. something that you can get when you are visiting candy <laughs> all right so my next question will be about shopping experience is there any particular neighborhood just an area we can go into detail in later but areas which offer like best shopping experience within candy uh, candy has a bazaar once you get down from the bus station on the opposite side there is a big bazaar and the shopping mall called candy city center so these are the two main places perfect On that note, you've mentioned that there's a lot of scenery around. Is there any particular area or neighborhood within Kandy where uh, tourists are bound to find like Instagramable spots? Uh, Bahirava Kanda Temple is one of the very popular Instagram spots because of the view. That temple has a giant white color Lord Buddha statue. So. Yeah. facing that statue many tourists wants to take a picture with the 360 degree view and you can see the whole city from that location there is another place called candy view point situated on the opposite side of bahirava kanda on the other mountains okay. which is little bit higher than that temple location this candy view point 
which is about five kilometers away from the city center. The road is fine. It's not difficult to get in there. That place, that place offer you a great view and to uh, take the pictures. That's one of the perfect places. That's the second place. There is another area called the Calais, a small forest opposite side of the back, like back side of the tooth relic temple that which is a green forest again that location has a beautiful view towards the main city these three places are very popular among local tourists as well as all right so let's talk about accommodation can you recommend any area uh, for tourists to stay in there's lots of airbnb options or hotels resorts stuff like that yes can they offer a wide range of uh, accommodation facilities, starting from five-star hotels to homestays? In this range, you can find in Candy. Especially the five-star hotels are situated on the hotspot with a great view of Candy City and the suburbs and even the waterfall facing waterfalls and mountains. One of the most popular five-star hotel is called Candy Citadel. Citadel is belongs to one of the Sri Lankan local luxury hotel chain called Cinnamon. There are Cinnamon hotels and another hotel called Amaya Hills. Amaya Hills, again, a five-star hotel situated on the top of the mountain of uh, Candy City, facing the uh, view of Candy. That view is breathtaking from there, actually. Grand Candian is another five-star hotel and uh, there is Earl's Regency, which is uh, belongs to another local hotel chain. There are plenty of boutique hotels like Simpsons and Forest, uh, Mountbatten, Bungalow belongs to Thema Collection hotels in the country. And uh, it's a bit expensive though, but if you are going with a budget, the four-star hotels are also available like Tilanka. But even if you are looking for a homestay, that option is also available. Okay, perfect. And personally, do you have any specific place that you love to stay in? And why would that be? When talking about Candy City, I have stayed in five-star hotels, but I prefer little places. If you want to stay at a five-star hotel and uh, enjoy a great meal and buffets with a good view, then Mahavali Ridge is one of my first picks. It's a very traditional hotel for modern tour guides that some people may not like, but that has some sort of royalty maintains inside like the prestige and everything very much classic type of uh, hotel so that's okay. one of the places i would uh, love to stay uh, there is a hotel called simpsons uh, i used to stay there for one night which is situated very close to that forest reserve area with the mist in the evening and a gloomy dark day it gives you a different cozy feel yeah. there is a mountain called Hunt on the eastern part of the city offers different views of the city and the forest and the mountain areas. Though That area also has small hotels, which is my favorite part when I go to Candy. I try to stay around that area. That's a bit more cooler than the Candy City. The temperature might go down to 18, 19 degrees in the night time, wow. around 15 to 20 sometimes during the peak season. I pick small hotels. There are probably thousands of small hotels around that area inside of the mountains. And most of those hotels have maintaining the sustainable tourism uh, practices. There are, there are very less pollution around. They are ha happening. It's a beautiful area to stay. Okay. And these hotels also family friendly, kid friendly? Yes. O almost all these hotels are family friendly, kids friendly, and even the disabled can easily access. Perfect. That's great. Uh, so lots of accommodation options. Let's uh, move on to food. Sri Lanka has its own traditional flavor and so does candy. So yes. are there any particular local food that tourists should try when they're in the city? Yes. Uh, candy offers uh, different cuisines. Uh, when you talk about the food in Sri Lanka, everybody will say it's spicy and <laughs> it's hot. Right. And, we get the uh, same complaint in India. <laughs> yes, of course. Maybe Sri Lankan food is spicier than Indian. Some chilies can blow your head like in no <laughs> time. Like it's really, really hot. Most of our people are used to it with this island mindset. <laughs> like mm -hmm. they read it that for a long period of time. But when you go to Candy, you feel the food is not really spicy compared to the other part of the country. When you talk about the chili, mm -hmm. they use light 
chilies the cuisines are so delicious the traditional grandmas and our relations in that particular area can cook absolutely brilliant like i love their food you need to try the local authentic rice and curry in candy they use the natural ingredients from the forest like leaves and they make it with coconut sambal and stuff like that Mm-hmm. food has a lots of varieties what they have been using throughout their very long history so yeah. the food culture is very unique compared to the southern part of sri lanka and the northern part of sri lanka so it's a blend of food and the op- many options are available since this city is a tamil singhala muslim and other minorities are living the cuisines are been diversified with their cultures and everything so this is something you can experience within the city there are plenty of restaurants available to experience indian food when i go to kandy i usually go to some of these indian restaurants i personally like indian cuisine so that's one of my picks if you are going out of the main city to the mountain suburbs the cuisine is very different bit spicy but less spicy than the other Uh, part of the country. Okay, so on topic of restaurants, can you recommend some food markets or restaurants in Kandy that tourists should not miss? Yes, Kandy has a big shopping mall called Kandy City Centre. Yeah. On the uh, top floor and the bottom floor, there is a food court which offers varieties of different foods from all around the world. There are local Sri Lankan foodies available as well as the Indian, Pakistani, Lebanese, Arabic foodies. and uh, european food every kind of uh, food is available at a reasonable cost that's one of the place uh, that you can go and experience different varieties of food this is popular among the local crowd especially among the young generation and going beyond that food courts if you want to visit the local traditional type of authentic food there is a one very popular place called art and craft center restaurant which is situated about 1 and 1/2 kilometers from the city center very popular place very close to the candy high school is very popular for sri lankan food with lots of curries rice and local desserts so that's one of my favorite places candy has a place called colombo street around the temple of tooth really those street have so many hotels belongs to muslim people muslim people having different type of cuisines and which are a bit yeah. spicy but very delicious so that's one of the street main street has and bilal restaurant are very popular ones among the local crowd even for the foreigners to go and have a meal it doesn't matter so it's very hygienic they practice the hygienic measurements almost everywhere so that main street is one of the hot spot that you can find plenty of local restaurants Okay. Do these require bookings in advance? No, you don't need to make a prior booking. But for art and craft center restaurant to experience the local Sri Lankan food, it's better if you call them and reserve your spot because throughout the day that's very crowded, and it's better you reserve your spot in advance. All right. A lot of people who are vegan or vegetarian or need gluten-free food travel to Kandy. Can the city accommodate them? Are there yes. food options? Yeah. of course since kandy city has religious and cultural background mm-hmm. especially with the buddhist and the hindu crowd there are many vegan shops especially the indian food offers the vegan option for travelers indian cuisine places so indian restaurant there are about four five indian restaurants within the city center so it's easy for them and even the city center building has uh, another vegan shop there are not so many options but even yeah. if you are vegan you have some sort of options available there okay perfect um in case they don't find anything um are there convenience stores where tourists can buy food or other essentials yes in sri lanka we have supermarket chains uh-huh. in kandy there are three options the first one is called kargil's food city which is very popular with the red color outfit around the building you can easily find it it's called kargils yeah. there are three or four kargils supermarkets are available around the candy city the next one is keels keels their color is green 
KHWL skills. This is another very popular supermarket among the travelers to Kandy. And there is another one called international chain called Spa. So that's also available. So those are convenient supermarkets. There are boutiques right. around the city centers. So you can go and just check whether the local person could speak English. So that has to be <laughs> measured because some of the locals doesn't speak and you might need support from people who can translate for you. All right. Are there also any food delivery apps that tourists can download and get food from? Yes. Both Uber and PickMe offer food delivery options. Okay. Perfect. And last question I have in this section is that, is it safe to drink tap water in Kandy? Yes. Kandy is one of the places you can find a pure water, mineral water. So... It's a place of springs, natural springs. So people are having the best water in the country, especially close to that candy city. I explained earlier, the Knuckles Forest Reserve range is there. So you don't have to worry about water. You can just drink the tap water. That's safe. All right. I would like to understand the healthcare system for tourists in candy. Are there any um, <laughs> hospitals they can go to if they need um, an emergency? Yes, in Sri Lanka, the health system is free of charge. The public okay. health system is there. There are public-owned hospitals situated in each and every city. Kandy has a general hospital, belongs to the Sri Lankan government, which offers the free health care uh, facilities for anybody, even that can be a international tourist or even a local, just when, when they have an emergency or health problem, they can go in, get an appointment from the counter and then meet the doctor and get the free medicine and go. So that facility is available for a first time visitor that might be a bit difficult because without support from a local or a tour guide, since it's free medical facilities, there are queues and there are a bit of crowd uh, gathered around that hospitals. So that's the first option you can uh, do. And the other thing is uh, there are private hospitals available in each corner of the city. And there are private hospitals like Lanka, Asiri, Navalok. And you can do online channeling and meet doctors at your convenient times. There are private hospitals around the city as well as the small channeling centers and doctors having small dispensaries. So early morning or in the evening, you can meet the doctors at their private clinics. And in case a tourist needs a simple painkiller or flu medicine, uh, can they easily get it from a pharmacy or would they require yes. a prescription? If it is not a serious matter or if they have a prescription, that's very easy. But after talking to the pharmacist and explain your matter, they take a perfect measure about your health conditions, they will definitely issue the medicine. Okay, before we move on to shopping section, let's talk a bit about money matters. So, is it better to do local transactions with cash or credit card when in candy? If you want to exchange the foreign currency, candy have few places you can exchange the foreign currency, but if you are traveling alone, then that's not the perfect thing that you want to do because you might end up with scams and things like that. It's better to use the credit card. If you exchange the money in Colombo and go to Candy, would be a perfect way to deal with that problem. Candy has places, but it takes some time. The Candy City is a small area with packed, of, packed with lots of buildings and the people. There is a huge traffic jam. So going from one place to another, it's, it makes it a little bit uncomfortable for the travelers. So my advice is to use the credit card more often than cash. If you have local cash, you can do anything there. Okay, perfect. Let's talk about shopping. What are some of the best, most unique souvenirs to risk in buying candy? In candy, candy is popular. I will explain from high-end souvenirs to low-end souvenirs. Okay. Sri Lanka is very popular for sapphires. This is one of the reasons why the colonial rulers came to Sri Lanka. Blue Sapphire is one of the Sri Lankan very much iconic that the people around the world have been knowing. Even Queen Elizabeth is wearing one of the Sri Lankan Blue Sapphires in her crown. 
and still yeah. it's remaining. So it's Sri Lanka has been producing those sapphires and the other gems like ruby, emerald, and st still producing. And there are plenty of left to be dig in and taken. And candy is the hotspot where they sell the gem and jewelry. Candy has the most large scale market who are selling the gem and jewelries. You can either buy raw gems or even the jewels. Whatever the type of jewels, they will customize according to your preferences. There is a huge street close to Candy City, which is called High School Street. It has about 20, 30 jewelry shops where you can go and buy whatever you dream if you are a jewel lover. And that's one of the things. I would say it's not expensive. Yet. According to your preference, yeah, you can go from the lower prices to the higher prices you can always bargain with the vendors and you need to make sure whether they are actual then because some, there are some scams selling synthetic or the artificial gems and jewelry you need a tour guide or someone who can make sure those are actual and do the bargaining and stuff like that that yeah. that's a huge market you don't want to miss even if you are not buying i suggest you go and see that street go to those shops because even those shops are still having the mines inside the uh, shops like oh. those were they are for generations their families were doing the same industry you can see how they do it you can uh, visit that and uh, the process and everything is demonstrated so it's one of the better experience you can do when it's come to the souvenir things the next thing is wood carvings candy is popular for wood carving most people who are living in these mountains, they are they are craftsmen. They know how to do this amazing complex wood carvings. The craft centers around Candy City, from small key tags to large wood carving souvenirs. That's something you don't want to miss. The next thing is the Ceylon tea. Candy is a hotspot for Ceylon tea, situated about. 1200 elevation from the ground level which is a perfect place for growing the highland uh, black tea and uh, everybody knows sri lanka is pro um, producing one of the uh, world best quality teas the british started growing ceylon tea beyond candy then you go to the highlands and the high ground there are plenty of it's a big range you can start from orange peco broken orange peco f silver tips golden tips there are lots of variations you can try so all those things are available sometimes in your countries it will be three times uh, expensive than buying in sri lanka so this is one of the best souvenir that you can ever find within this country if you are a first time visitor sri lanka you will get a free cup of tea almost all the time <laughs> before buying ceylon tea the people are very generous and hospitable all right perfect the free tea sounds really amazing. <laughs> there are tea testing activities are also there. When you go inside of a tea factory and in a huge garden, which is more scenic, what happens is uh, normally when I do tours, I bring my clients to those tea gardens, tea estates, and they start taking pictures uh, and that pictures have beautiful backdrops. And once you go up in the hills, that makes even more beautiful. Even when you go inside the tea, the factory workers will show you how the process is done, how the green tea has been created, the, the black tea and everything. Finally, they will offer you different types of teas to taste with a small candy. With the tea, makes a great, perfect combination. So that's one of the specialties in the hill country. All right. And what's the best places to go in candy to buy all these things? You can go to supermarkets. Supermarkets, the first option is supermarkets. Supermarkets have very convenient prices, but not every supermarket has the best quality teas. To buy pure quality teas, you can buy them okay. from the tea factories. Almost all tea factories maintain a stall, a small boutique. So it's always better to go to the tea factory and buy it. The price might be touch expressing not very high prices but maybe little extra added because of yeah. their work and the effort apart from that you can go to small convenience centers as well but my suggestion is for you to go to the tea factories to buy them all right okay next question i have is about the the wi-fi situation you have a lot of you have work travel culture now 
is yes. can be good with Wi-Fi or uh, would a tourist require local SIM card? Candy has the 4G connection and uh, okay. the LAN connection and all the hotels, small restaurants and even the homestays have Wi-Fi. Check with property owners if the Wi-Fi connection is good. But since this city is situated inside of the mountains, due to a sudden weather changes, climatic conditions, the connection can be a uh, bit different to each and every day. Like with the wind and the climatic conditions might change the speed and things like that. But it's always better if you are coming from the airport, it's better you buy your own SIM card and get a data plan and come to the city and then you can enjoy the uninterrupted internet connections. Perfect. All right. Let's also talk about the best time to visit Candy. Is there any particular season that's perfect? Yes. Talking about the climatic conditions, there is no season to visit Candy. Even if it is raining or a sunny day, the beauty of this city doesn't fade. When it's raining, that's the most beautiful time to visit because locals believe rainy days are the best days to visit Candy uh, with that uh, mountain surrounded and the misty hills and the gloomy days. Mm -hmm. Make the perfect picture and please in your eye will definitely do and there is no particular season when talking about the climatic or weather conditions but when it's come to the culture there is a very specific season uh, which is the month of august july and august july august and september which has the world famous cultural festival happening around the candy city this is called asala perahara it's a perahara means a possession where the local teams get engaged with the authority of temple of tooth relic and they organize this festival for about three weeks up to one month it's right before the monsoon sri lanka is heavily depend on the agriculture so we need the rain yeah. the idea of this activity is asking the rain they are putting their grievance to the god to get the rain for their agricultural purposes. This is not a modern activity. This has been coming with a thousand of years history. This event has lots of dancing. In Sri Lanka, our dancing culture uh, is vibrant. It can be categorized into three Candian dancing, lower country dancing, and mid-range dancing items. Some of the dancers use mask, devil mask, and uh, different types of things. And even we have some sort of Indian dancing influence to our dancing culture as well. But Sri Lankan dancing remains unique with tapes and drumming and things are very unique to this land. Especially when you talk about candy is the hotspot for dancing towers and to even experience. During cultural festivals, there are plenty of different types of dancing items have been demonstrated. Mm -hmm. And the most fascinating thing is the elephants. Long time ago, elephants were used to get the like labor during back in the colonial days. Mm -hmm. They used the elephants to get the labor works done, but nowadays it's prohibited and none of the elephants have been taken for labor and the government has specific rules. During this cultural festival, people decorate the elephants with colorful clothes and light up their just because this festival always happens in the night time these are tamed elephants they are very friendly with the people around the city millions of people from all around the world get around the city in the night time and they watch this beautiful uh, ceremony with drumming dancing colorful uh, clothes and 30, 40 elephants, which makes an amazing event, which, which is considered another UNESCO heritage. It's been declared as the UNESCO heritage and been protected uh, worldwide and very popular among, around the world. So this is happening July and August till the end of the full moon day. So okay. on the uh, final full moon day of uh, August uh, is the last, the supreme type of the cultural festival is happening. They prepare for this whole throughout the year. There are families who are dedicated for this throughout their history. Right. <laughs> All right. One last question before we almost wind up with the interview. What's the ideal duration to come to Candy? As in two days, three days? 
Three days are more than enough to okay. explore the candy city. But if you want to do things like going hikes or adventure, I recommend seven days. The nearby mountain ranges and the rainforest, there are plenty of things to offer for you if you love nature. So yeah. to explore the candy city, two days are enough. And if you want to go to the suburbs and experience the culture and the people, hospital, hospitality and everything, at least you need three days. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's talk about safety. As no country is entirely safe in Candy, is it safe for solo and female travelers to come to Candy and visit? Of course. Sri Lanka had few security concerns in the past. We had a civil war for 30 years here in Sri Lanka. The civil war started back in 1979 and was ended back in 2009. This was a communal crisis between the terrorists from the northern part of northern and eastern part of Sri Lanka and with the Sri Lankan army. There were conflicts and bombing during that time, and our tourism industry was down to zero at, at that particular season. Once the uh, war was ended, the government has implemented the uh, very high security plan. And they are protecting candy because candy has been attacked two times during the civil war time. And some of yeah. the terrorists blasted the temple of Tooth Relic with the suicide bombers. Oh, okay. Yeah, there were a lot of people killed inside of the temple as well as outside of the temple. But now it's a safe city since the terrorism is gone and the people are living with the other community with peace, harmony and understanding. There is zero risk even for the solo traveler, female traveler to come and visit, it doesn't matter because Sri Lankan people are a bit religious, I would say, religious, culturally high context. So they have some sort of, they have, they have a big respect for women and even in the night time, it doesn't matter, go out and until midnight and even the nightlife you can enjoy here in Candy, it doesn't matter. There is very less incidents have happened about the discrimination or the Okay. harassment it's very less also are there any we talked about one scam where the gemstone scam but besides that yes. are there any other common scams to should watch out for in can yeah if you are taking a took be specific about where you want to go and you follow the google maps almost all the time otherwise he will go in a different route and tell you a very high price you agreed earlier okay. it's better always you agree the price in advance and specifically tell him the location then you can drive safely otherwise you will end up in a different place and be cautious about that since uh, everybody needs to have that smart thinking mindset otherwise they will be fooled yeah. by people about the food there is nothing to worry very less scams in the people are a bit uh, more cooler than the people are living in southern and the <laughs> northern part because can see with the climate conditions and everything people used to live very calm and yeah. cool lifestyle so it's easy okay another question is are there any medications or you know, items that travelers are not permitted to bring into the country no other than the drugs Anything is possible. Since this is a small island, uh, by the time you are coming out of the airport, you are being monitored. So you don't have to worry about specific locations where you are going. If you are not bringing cannabis or drugs or stuff like that inside of your bag, you are almost all the time safe. Yeah, Candy also have, I, I forgot to tell you, Candy has a rich culture of Ayurveda medicine. Mm -hmm. Ayurvedic is a traditional indigenous medication system we are practicing in Sri Lanka. So apart from Western medicine, many people are using this. Within the city, you can find lots of wellness, Ayurvedic medication doctors registered in the Sri Lankan medication departments as well. That's something that you can experience. All right. Okay, one last question before we wind up today's session. How common is tipping wait staff to a guide or any person who provides his service in Candy? In Sri Lanka, we don't have any tipping policy. Yeah. There is no fixed tipping policy, but for the service and hospitality, which, which is pure uh, among this local crowd, uh, most of the Sri Lankans are very much self-service oriented. Like they yeah. try to provide you the best experience without thinking about anything in return, but it's always better to give tips which makes them happy and they can enjoy later on in the day. 
so that will make a good impression about the travelers so i would suggest to do give them some tips if you are if you have got a satisfied experience okay is there any percentage you'd recommend 10% 15% yeah about 10% would be the normal way but that's not compulsory but it's as a ritual all right so we talked a lot about candy discovered hidden gems and all it has to offer i'm sure we have more to talk about but with all this knowledge tourists would find candy a very attractive destination thank yeah. you so much for taking time of your day to join us and speak about candy thank you very much i would love to join again with another city in the south <laughs> we look forward to it thank you everybody for tuning in today's session um, we will be back with more interesting episodes and more interesting travel talk series thank you so much and thank you bye much.